Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new iPad Mini with Retina display. And I'm personally really excited to finally see these come out. I was a big fan of the original iPad Mini, which is still available. This is now $299, so it's a little cheaper than before. But uh, Apple kind of treated this as the budget tablet. While I thought this was the perfect size and form factor, Apple just wanted to sort of sell this as the cheap tablet and focus the attention on the full-size Retina tablet. But I really wanted the Retina quality experience in this smaller form factor, and that is what the iPad Mini uh, with Retina display finally does. It gives us the same specs of the full size, in this case the iPad Air tablet, and puts it into the smaller form factor. Now this is increasing the in price to $399, but of course this is available for $299 if you want the last generation one. But you get the full specs of the iPad Air, but $100 cheaper. Now in terms of specs, we have that same A7 64-bit processor with the M7 Motion co-processor, and we have the same display resolution, so that's a uh, 2048 display by 1536 that gives us a picture of 326 which is identical to the iPhone but that's better than the iPad Air at 264 pixels per inch of course that's a larger display 9.7 inches that's much better than the 163 on the original iPad mini uh, this also has the same cameras as the iPad Air 5 megapixel rear fine camera and the new and improved FaceTime camera which is a 1.2 megapixels with backside illumination now just like the iPad Air we have 16 32 64 and 120 gig capacities here and each capacity increase is $100 above the starting price at $399. We also have an LTE version. So you just add $130 to whatever capacity you pick and uh, you can get both uh, LTE connectivity to AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, or Sprint in the US. You also get GPS antennas for uh, the navigation apps and that sort of thing. So let's go and take a look at these. And again, we have two colors to pick from black with space gray metal or white with silver metal. And we're gonna take a look at both of them. First, starting off with space gray. Now, if you look at the box, you can see it doesn't say anything about having a Retina display. It just says iPad Mini. And unless you look really closely, you can't really tell which one you have in your hand here. But if you look here, you can see includes iPad Mini with Retina display. So let's go ahead and crack this open and take a look. All right, so let's just slice the plastic. All right, so let's just open this. I have to kind of shake it to free it here. Grab it. There we go. There's our Space Gray iPad Mini with Retina display. It is slightly heavier. It's now 0.78 pounds or 0.72 pounds. Uh, the old one was 0.68 pounds. So there's a slight increase in weight. There's also a slight increase in thickness. And uh, we're going to take a look at that when we compare them side by side. But we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. Now the first thing that jumps out here if you're used to the original iPad Mini is the larger wall adapter here. So we go from that 5 watt compact wall adapter, the same one you get with your iPhone, to this larger 10 watt power adapter. So you should get quicker charging times. This is still smaller than the 12 watt that comes with the iPad Air. So there you go, you can see the prongs pop off. You can add your extension cable or your local wall adapter, depending on what region you're in. We also have our literature packet. I know people hate when I say literature, but uh, it has the paperwork in it. So we have our uh, uh, iPad mini with our uh, instructions on exactly what each button does. And we're familiar with that. We're gonna talk, take a look at that when we look at the iPad and of course our Apple stickers. And of course we have our standard USB to lightning charging and sync cable. All right, so let's get to the iPad mini itself. And I realize I have to make a fact correction already. This is 0.73 pounds, the Wi-Fi version, not 0.72 pounds. So again, 0.73 versus 0.68 of the original iPad mini. All right, so let's crack this open. We have this little envelope to pull open and slide it right out. Now, before we take a close look at the design and features of the iPad, let's go ahead and get the white version out. All right, so let's just crack into the white version. All right, just shake it to release it. And there we go. We have a little tab here to lift up. And again, we have that raw aluminum back panel. And we have the same accessories, 10 watt power adapter, literature packet, and the uh, uh, USB, uh, lightning to USB, or USB to lightning charging cable. And of course, these are Wi-Fi only, so we do not have the SIM ejection tool in here. All right, so let's just peel off the back panel. Slide it out. And there we go. So let's bring back the space gray model and we can take a close look at the design and features. Now taking a look at the designs, really not much has changed here, but there are a few things that set it apart. For one thing, it is slightly heavier, slightly thicker, but that's largely imperceptible. But there are a few features that point to the fact that this is the iPad mini with retina display, of course, before you turn on that display. And one of them is these dual microphones. You'll see up here we have these dual microphones as opposed to the single microphone from the original iPad mini. Now, of course, the original iPad mini, when it launched, 
launched, launched with this slate color. We now have a space gray color which has replaced it. So space gray is believed to be a lot more durable than the, spa the slate color. This was kind of a darker bluish color uh, which had a tendency to chip and scratch more obviously. So this should be a little more durable. Now the other difference is the Apple logo. So if you look at the Apple logo on the original iPad mini, you can see that it's actually polished into the aluminum. This time it's a separate component which has kind of got a mirrored finish. It's a little uh, more glossy looking. So you can see that's another way of distinguishing them. Now on the back we have the same 5 megapixel autofocusing camera. This also has stabilization built in. This is again identical to the iPad Air. The buttons are also identical. So you can see that they are metal and color matched to the body. So you can see our individual volume controls as well as our uh, physical switch. You can program for either mute or orientation lock. You can see your sleep wake button. Up top you'll find your dual microphones. We also have our headphone jack with color matching inserts. Along the bottom We'll find stereo speakers here, just like before. Uh, you can see that the speaker grills actually match the color of the body of your iPad. You also have that insert for the lightning connector, which is also color matched. Now along the front you'll find your home buttons without Touch ID, so just like the iPad Air, the iPad Mini does not get Touch ID. And of course you have your mirrored chamfered edge, which is a nice design detail that kind of debuted with the iPhone 5 and the original iPad Mini. You can see it's picked up here as well, you can see it's a little darker on the space gray version versus the raw white and silver version. Alright, so let's go ahead and boot these up for the first time, just going to tap and hold the power button. And as you can see we actually have color matching boot screens. All right, so let me show you how to set up one of them. So I'm just going to log into my wireless network. All right, so we can enable or disable location services. I'm going to say enable. Now I'm going to set this up as a new iPad, but you can also restore from an iCloud backup or from an iTunes backup. And I'm going to sign in with my Apple ID. Now because I use a different Apple ID for my iCloud account, I'm going to select this instead of clicking next. Because if I select next and use this ID, it will also use it for my iCloud account, which I don't want it to do. So let's go ahead and select that and log into my iCloud account. Now next I have to agree to the terms and conditions. Agree. Yes, I want to use iCloud. Now next up is setting up my iMessage and FaceTime account. So I'm just going to use my iPhone to cover it up and click next. And I can create a passcode or I can skip that. I'm going to skip that for now. Yes, I want to use Siri. Yes, we can automatically send diagnostic information to Apple. That's fine. And we can register with Apple. And let's get started. All right, so there we go. We have our Retina iPad Mini. And I want to increase my brightness so we can take a look at that display. Now, even before we take a look at the pixel density, the Retina iPad Mini to me looks a lot brighter with a deeper contrast with more vivid colors than the non-Retina version. So the non-Retina version to me always seemed a little dingy, especially compared to the Retina full-size iPad. Now just to give you an idea of the display quality, here we have the non-Retina iPad Mini. Here is the Retina iPad Mini. So you can see there's a huge difference there in terms of sharpness and clarity. Again, non-Retina, Retina. So non-Retina, Retina. Non-Retina, Retina. Now because we have this high resolution display, even the smallest text is pin sharp. This makes it an ideal e-reader, especially with this lightweight form factor which is more one-handable. You definitely want to read on this as opposed to the full-size iPad. And the previous iPad mini kind of had uh, crunchy looking text. It wasn't very clear and crisp, looked a little blurry, which made it a little more fatiguing on the eyes to read. Now at first glance, the iPad mini retina display is very similar to the iPad Air's display, but it is a little brighter, at least to me. When I look at it, you can see that the whites are brighter. But uh, the iPad mini does seem to be a little more washed out than the iPad Air, especially with colors. So the color gamut on the iPad mini is a little less than the iPad Air. It's particularly obvious with elements like this, for example, this live uh, graphic here it seems to be more vibrant on the iPad Air versus the iPad mini, but the differences are pretty minor. Now just to give you some idea of the performance gains here, so here we have an app, so we have Safari, and you can see that scrolling through it, the uh, one on the left does perform better with the Retina display. If you minimize the app, you can see that is quicker to respond. Same with bringing up settings here. You can see that loaded quickly. This one is loading, it takes a little longer. Press the home button, takes you back again, responds more slowly. You can also bring up the multitasker or the uh, recent app switcher, and as you can see, it's quicker on the uh, Retina versus the non-Retina. Again, you press the home button, it takes a little longer on the uh, non-retina. Now we can also test Siri. What's the weather like tomorrow? Nice weather coming up tomorrow. Up to 46 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. So the user interface responded more quickly, but they returned the results at the same time. How tall is the new World Trade Center? 
One World Trade Center is 1,792 feet tall. Now, another way we can test speed is just to rotate it to landscape mode and see how quickly one rotates over the other. So you can see that the Retina iPad Mini on the left is a little quicker than the non-Retina. Now, Apple says that the iPad Mini with Retina display has four times the graphics processor of the A5-powered non-Retina iPad Mini. So you can see clear difference here, huge gain in terms of our synthetic scores from 260 to 1388. Uh, also big change here in terms of the multi-core score, 491 versus 2507, that's a huge leap. We also have eight times the graphics performance of the old iPad Mini. Now this isn't quite up to par with the iPad Air, which is clocked at 1.4 gigahertz versus 1.3 here. That's thanks to the larger battery and larger area for heat dissipation. Now this is pretty much identical to the iPhone 5S, which has the same processor, also clocked at 1.3 gigahertz, so we see the same Geekbench 3 scores. Now the Retina iPad Mini on the right is slightly thicker than the non-Retina. It's actually 7.5 millimeters versus 7.2, so the difference is pretty minor. In fact, cases and accessories don't seem to mind that difference at all. Now when it comes to selecting white or black, I think you could make an argument for both of them. I tend to like the white version just because I think the display is easier to look at when you have a white bezel. It kind of balances out your eyes a little bit better. It just seems to be more comfortable for me to look at. But uh, the other great thing about the white display is that it does a better job for the camouflaging glare. So you don't see as much glare at the bezel. So for example, you see a little glare there. It's not as obvious. So when you go to the black version, you see a little more glare there, obviously, because it's uh, more prominent with the black bezel. Uh, the other great thing here is that it sort of hides fingerprints. The, the, you know, the white bezel does a better job hiding fingerprints. And when the display is lit, those fingerprints sort of go away. So that's one of the benefits of having white. And also the white version comes with a silver back panel or raw aluminum back panel. There's no finish on this like the space gray. So when you scratch it, you're less likely to see it just because the material color is the same through and through. While the space gray has a finish on it that you could scratch and reveal the raw aluminum underneath. Now the great thing about the black display is that it's more immersive, so you don't see the white display, especially when you're watching the movie or something like that, uh, and it also feels a little more seamless. So you don't see the portholes for the camera or the sensors, and the buttons sort of disappear, so it just looks a little more cleaner. So definitely an advantage to having black. Now like the previous iPad Mini and now the iPad Air, we have the smaller bezel for portrait orientation. So this tablet encourages portrait orientation use versus a lot of other tablets that encourage landscape use. So when you hold it in this orientation, uh, there is software in here that actually picks up on the fact that you're handling the iPad rather than intentionally touching the screen. So it kind of ignores the uh, touch point I have right here with my thumb and allows me to scroll through it. So for example, if I'm in a website and I want to scroll around, you can see that it ignores the presence of my thumb. But if I go a little farther in and hold it there, you can see it brings up some of my controls here. Now the camera app is pretty much unchanged. So we can tap anywhere on the screen to focus and change exposure. You can also tap anywhere on the screen and hold it to lock the exposure and focus. There we go, you can see the little indicator up here, and you can tap anywhere on the screen to stop that. You can also take your photo, and if you tap and hold it, you can take several photos at once. It doesn't have that burst mode like you get with the iPhone. And you can move between video mode, photo mode, and square mode just by swiping. We also have HDR, which we can enable, and we can also switch the camera from front to back. Now if you take a look at the iPad Air versus the iPad Mini, again, it's pretty much a shrunken down version of the iPad Air, dimension to dimension. So we even have a smaller bezel on the iPad Mini versus the iPad Air, but we have that same technology that recognizes the presence of your grip versus an intentional press of the screen. Now we have the same screen resolution, uh, from the iPad Air on the iPad Mini, as I discussed earlier, so we have a more dense pixel display on the iPad Mini. Uh, and then, of course, we have the same overall layout. We have the same FaceTime camera, 1.2 megapixels with backside illumination. On the back, we have our Apple logo, which is also a separate component on both devices. Up top, we have our dual microphones, our headphone jack in the same location. We have the same 5 megapixel camera module with all the same features. We have our buttons, which are the same size, actually. So you can see the sleep-wake button, the volume buttons, as well as the uh, switch here. On the bottom, we have our stereo speakers flanking the lightning port. And as you can see, they are larger on the iPad Air, so they do sound louder and clearer. Now, just like the iPad Air, we can expect 10 hours of battery out of the iPad Mini with Retina display, which is even more impressive when you consider the huge CPU spec bump we get with the A7 processor, as well as that Retina display. So there's a huge jump in terms of performance, as well as that display, and we still retain 10 hours of battery life from the standard iPad Mini. Now, like all iPads, the Mini also has the smart cover, which uses magnets built into the iPad to latch this cover over the front glass. Now, this is pretty much unchanged from the last generation, which are 
are reviewed previously, we just get new colors. So this retails for $39 for the iPad mini. Uh, it's available in black, pink, yellow, blue, green, and product red as I have here. So let's quickly unbox this and take a look at it. So you just pull this tab and push it through. So we have this three-fold design which allows you to prop up the iPad. You can see it's got magnets that hold the prop together and you can see the hinge here which again is sort of felt covered which protects the iPad when it connects to the edge of it. So let's go ahead and bring the new iPad mini to the cover and as you can see when you bring it to the left side it automatically latches on and it closes on the screen and there are magnets that help to hold it there. As you can see when you lift up the iPad cover, the smart cover, it wakes it up for you and puts it back to sleep. So you can see it does a nice job just protecting the front glass while allowing the design of the iPad to show through, but of course it doesn't provide full 360 degree protection. As you can see it also rolls up and there you go. You can prop it up for the typing position or the landscape position. Now the magnets are actually pretty sturdy so they will hold onto the iPad pretty securely especially with the lightweight iPad mini and you can pull it off pretty easily. Now Apple finally released smart cases for the iPad mini which I will review in a separate video. So in conclusion, I'm definitely impressed by the new iPad mini. We retain that thin, lightweight form factor with a little compromise. It's slightly heavier, slightly thicker, almost imperceptibly so. It doesn't make a big difference here. And we get only a slight price increase. So for only $60 more, we get four times the CPU performance, eight times the graphics performance, while retaining 10 hours of battery life with that beautiful Retina display. Now some would say that the iPad mini with Retina display is too expensive, but when it launched at $329, I said I'd be willing to pay $500 for a device device this size with a retina display and the performance of a full-size iPad. I just like the form factor. I prefer it. I don't want to pay less for it. I want to have the same experience. And Apple has finally delivered this and I think $400, $100 less than the full-size iPad Air, I think that's a bargain, especially with that pixel density and all the same features. I'm definitely a big fan of what they've done with the new iPad mini. So that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. All right, guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, testing out the front-facing FaceTime camera, again, improved with backside illumination. It records video at 720p resolution, so no 1080p here, but it does a pretty good job, and of course, we do have the dual microphones for better audio pickup. All right, guys, so I'm here in my foyer with my two dogs, Chloe and Zoe, testing out the iSight camera. Again, five megapixels with auto-focusing, auto-exposure, as well as stabilization. This also gives you an idea of the performance of the dual microphones. Hopefully I'm not covering them up. But you can tap anywhere on the scene to change exposure and focus. And you can pinch in and out to zoom up. Of course, it's just digital zooming, so it's basically cropping the image. So there is Zoe. There is Chloe. Hey, Zoe. How's it going? So you can see they're sunbathing, their favorite activity, so they get a little sleepy. All right, so let's go outside and take a look at performance in outdoor conditions.